So on the CLEP exam, you may see a question on negative and positive numbers. And we can express them as inequalities. Now, we might not be told we're dealing with positive or negative numbers. But we should be aware that if we see an inequality like x and y are both greater than 0, this means x and y have to be what? Well, it means they have to be positive right, because they're both bigger than zero. And then you might see, well, what about other variables? What about um, t and u? Well, u is less than zero, and t is even smaller than that. Well, there we have negative numbers. So you might be given a problem with these inequalities, and you're not always told what the positive and negative num variables are, but you should be aware that in each case, when you actually have a positive or negative, because then they'll start asking us questions about these combinations. They might ask us to compare uh, the, the products of different combinations of these variables. For example, we might want to know, well, what about y right, times u? Is that always less than x times t? Is that always true? They might ask us other combinations as well. What about y times t? Is that always less than x times u? Is that always true? Or what about x times y? Is that always less than t times u? And last, let's look at one other combination here. x times t. Is that always less than y right? times t? Is that always, is that always true? So to deal with this, um, if, if, if we're out of strategies and, and unable to come up with another strategy, why not just substitute? Let's pick values for each of these variables. Let's say x is equal to 1. It's got to be positive, right? Remember, x is greater than 0. And y, oops, or x equals y, oops, which it could be, I guess. Uh, not in this case, of course, because x has to be less than y. But in another problem, it could be that. Here we know x is less than y. That's a, an important thing to point out. So maybe x is 1 and y is 2. They have to be positive in this case, and, and y has to be bigger than x. And t could be negative 2, and u be negative 1, right? Because u has to be bigger than, than t. So let's test one of these out. What about x times y? Is that always less than, than t times u? And the answer is no. Because, well, x and y, even with our just one case, by testing it out, 1 times 2 is equal to t times u, which is negative 2, times negative 1. And you might recognize this. This is positive 2, and this is also positive 2. So no, x times y is not always less than t times u. So this one is out. What about this one right here, x times t? Is that less than y times t? And it might seem that way. First of all, right, because, well, yeah, x is less than y. So if we multiply them by the same number, shouldn't x always be smaller than y? And that would be true if we were only dealing with positives. But yet, here, once we test it out, we have 1 times negative 2, right, x times t. How does that compare to y times t, which is 2 times negative 2? Well, in fact, it's the opposite of what they're saying here, because negative 2 is greater than negative 4. And then it makes sense, right? Because since t is negative, when you multiply y by t, you're going to get a value that's even more negative than x times t. So the more positive our first factor, the less our total product. For example, if I picked another variable like z, and it was negative 1,000, well, oh, positive 1,000, well, positive 1,000 times negative 2 makes a really enormous negative number, or make negative 2,000. So the larger these numbers get, the more negative the product will be, and therefore the smaller the product will be. So this is out. Let's go to this one. y times t is less than x times u. Let's just test it out for the, the numbers we've chosen. And if it works for that, then, then we're making some progress. Well, y is 2, t is negative 2. How does that compare to x, which is 1, times negative 1? 
Well, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. And negative 1 is bigger than negative 4. So, so far, this seems like a possible candidate, right? It, it seems possibly true. Let's just try the last one to see what happens there. Because it could be with these numbers that we've chosen here that they both seem like they always work. And then we'll just have to keep testing until we find that one of them uh, breaks or doesn't work. So y times u, well, that's 2 times negative 1. How does that compare to x, which is 1, times t, which is negative 2? Well, 2 times negative 1, that's negative 2. 1 times negative 2, negative 2, and those are equal. So no, y times u is not always less than x times t. And in this case, this has to be the correct answer, right? Assuming in the multiple choice problem they've given us the correct answer, but we can assume that they have. We don't have to test this any further. This is the one that works. And let's just talk about why that makes sense. Well, you're taking y, which is greater than, than x, and you're multiplying y by, by what? Well, by the most negative value you have. So you're taking the most you have, the most positive, and making it the most negative. And that has to be less than x times u, because if you think about what x is, it's a small positive amount times a larger negative amount. Well, um, here, since we know x has to be less than y, well, therefore, x has times u has to be bigger than y times t, because uh, this larger amount, y, is going to make our product much, much smaller than x times u. So there's, there's, there's a logical reason behind this, and we can extend this and keep going further, but I think for now it's, it's, it's enough to see the evidence of our simple case to show that, yes, this side will always be less than this side. All right, hope that